This is Fred Beck from Fred Talks Fighting. Today, I'm very lucky to be joined by Peter Madonna. So thank you very much for coming on, Peter. It's good to see you. How you doing, mate? Um, good to see you, Fred. Um, see your channel's doing well and uh, you're pushing on with it, mate. So uh, it's great, mate, to have more people in boxing like yourself. Oh, thank you, Peter. I appreciate that. I do really enjoy doing the, doing the interviews. But how are things with you, Peter? What do you mean up to? Yeah, we're all good. Um, since I retired, uh, you know, I had a brain tumour, had to retire. Um, obviously, I had a 15-hour operation on my brain tumour. Um, and then uh, I took a little bit of time out of boxing. Um, now, as you know, I've got my own uh, YouTube channel, Voice from the Corner. Um, just give it a little plug there. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm starting to enjoy it again, like getting back into it. Listen, I'm not going to get back into it um, physically, training fighters really or nothing like that. It'd be more just maybe get more into the media side of it. Like, you know, I've done, I've worked Sky before. I've worked, you know, radio stations. And now I've got my own channel. Um, you know, I, just, I enjoy talking about boxing, breaking down boxing, you know, predicting boxing, you know, but telling people how people win in boxing. Uh, not just like other people that they predict something, it goes the other way. And they say, yeah, but I said it could have gone that way as well. If you predict something you got to say what you're predicting, you know, in my opinion. Yeah, I'll put your channel link in the description so I want you to go subscribe to your channel. So let's talk about the fight. You were just saying you break down fights. Let's break down the fight between Joshua and Usyk, the fight they have on Saturday night. What are your thought, overall thoughts on his performance and Usyk's performance? I mean, um, us, I, uh, I broke the fight down. I predicted the fight before the fight even happened. I mean, the only thing that I got wrong in that fight was that it, it, he didn't stop him in the ninth or tenth round. But... Now people are saying, well, Usyk himself was saying, I could have stopped him, but my corner told me not to stop him. You know, it told me just to uh, stay safe. You're well in front. Um, but I broke the fight down. I said to people how he beats Joshua. You know, I said he steps he steps over to Joshua's right hand all the time, you know, causes, causes the danger is Joshua throwing that right hand. But if he keeps stepping towards that right, at least he knows that right hand's coming. And that's the only shot he's got to have coming. And that's the furthest hand away. And I mean, Joshua's legs were miles apart. So how he could detonate that right hand, I don't know, you know. Um, so it went exactly how I thought it was going to go. I did think that Joshua was going to win a few of the earlier rounds. And then that's why I thought Joshua would start gassing and then Usyk would then get on top and get him out of there, you know. Because I think it wasn't so much what Usyk done in the first few rounds. It was more making him miss in the first few rounds. But... Was he was he physically tired, Joshua? I don't think he was. I think he was more mentally tired. And uh, before the fight was before the before the fight was like properly made, I turned around and said it, and people thought I was mad what I was saying. But I said, listen, a great little one will always be a good big one because that's what Joshua is. He's a good big one. He's not a great big one. He's a good big one. What is U six now? U six a good big one now. He was a great little one now. He's a good big one. If it had got, got beat by Joshua, it wouldn't have been a good big one. But to become a great big one, you've got to beat Tyson Fury, in my opinion. You know, um, you want to get, you want to start rolling with the likes of Evander Holyfield and people like that. We're still talking a different era here, but you know, we got a, you know, you you we got to, um, we got to put in a uh, um, proportion of the fighters of them eras and this era. I mean, I will say this. Um, Joshua showed a lot of heart. I mean, Joshua to stay in there, you know, and, and and he was trying, but he looked like to me, stay humble, stay hungry. It looks like the hungriness has come out of Joshua. I don't know whether it's in the camp or what, but it just didn't look like him on that night. On the way to the ring, I mean, looking around at the crowd, touching, touching people's hands. You do all that afterwards, mate. You don't do that on the way to the ring. If I was training Joshua, I'd have kicked him up the arse and said, what are you doing? We've got a fight here, you know. Forget these 60,000 people to after the fight. And it, I found in the week leading up to the fight, that's all he wanted to do. He wanted to sit there and, you know, praise the crowd and all that. But listen, it's like he weren't physically and mentally focused on it. I mean, you know, we look at the, we look at the corner. I mean, the corner telling him he's winning the fight. or oh, beautiful. It's this, it's that. They're backslappers and cheerleaders. That's all that corner is. They're not real boxing people, in my opinion. Robert McCracken's the only one in that corner that's got a CV, but Robert McCracken was out at the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, you know, for me, 
someone of the stature of, of, of uh, Anthony Joshua in the UK, forget the UK, in the world, no one sells a ticket like Anthony Joshua. Let's forget his boxing ability. No one sells a ticket like him. Whoever is looking after Anthony Joshua should be tucking him into bed at night and reading him a bedtime story because it should be full focus on Anthony Joshua. You know, so there, there was a lot of mistakes there, in my opinion, in that camp. You know, um, you know, great night for Usyk. Congratulations to Usyk, but commiserations to Anthony Joshua. And I'll tell you what's a sad night for British boxing because... Who is going to sell tickets like Anthony Joshua? I bet you I ain't seen it in my lifetime yet, and I probably won't see it to the day I die. You know, he sells twenty four. You know, twenty four hours he's selling sixty thousand tickets. You know. Yeah, it's very true. You're saying it was a bad night for. It definitely was a bad night for British boxing there. And you were just saying, mentioning his team there, how some of them might have been, some of them might have been hype men. I don't know how the situation, but what do you think Josh Green can do about his team then? Bowler. I think the whole team, I think, you know, we got management team 268, I bet 365, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know what it's called, but he's got this commercial team around him. Listen, put the commercials to one side from there and focus on Alexander Usyk in a return. I mean, we've got, you know, people in the corner, no disrespect, but I don't even know who these people are, bar Robert McCracken. Um, you know, the only person in that team that I think I would keep in that team is Eddie Earn. Because Eddie Owen has been by his side. I, I don't always praise Eddie Owen, but I praise Eddie Owen when Eddie, I see Eddie Owen doing the right things. Look, I just, what I say, I see. And, and what I see, I say. And that, that, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think we need more people like that in boxing. We need Roy Kings in boxing. I mean, listen, when it comes after a fight, yeah, when a fight's ended, I can't understand. You've got a presenter, right? And you've got three pundits. Do you watch football? Do you watch football? Not often, no, actually, and I don't. Right, so, you, so you've got Roy Keane, you've got um, uh, Robbie Keane, say, for instance, and you've got um, Graham Soonis. So you've got three people that have been there, seen it and done it, and they'll argue amongst each other. They'll make TV, like that, that little work debate for 20 minutes will make TV. What happens with boxing, a fight finishes, they go to a presenter, a presenter will ask a couple of questions, and that'll be it. There won't be no more said about it. But I think people should be there to the turn and go, hold up a minute. No, I, I think you're wrong here. I think you're wrong here. So what I want to put out there is this. When you predict the fight, I believe in putting a gun to an head and predicting a fight like that because sit on what you say. That's what I believe, right? That's how life should be, right? You sit on what you say. So everybody turning around and saying, Joshua's too big, Joshua's too strong, Joshua's too, whatever you want to say, athletic or whatever. Hold up a minute. Break that down. Tell me how he's too big. Tell me how he's too strong. Tell me how he's going to beat Alexander Usyk. I knew he couldn't beat Alexander Usyk by his size and strength because he doesn't even know how to hold a fire. He doesn't know how to hold behind the elbows. He doesn't even know how to do that. He's an Olympic champion. He doesn't even know how to hold behind the elbows. Instead, he's pulling him down with his, with, with his hand and then with an uppercut. What you do in a school playground when you're 12 years old. I mean, you've got to learn the tricks of the trade. And for me... He's either a one-trick pony or, you know, no one's teaching him these, these... This is the problem. There's too many cheerleaders, too many backslap, uh, backslappers, yeah? Not teachers. It's a little bit... I'm going to go into a little tangent. It's a little bit like an Uber driver and a London taxi driver, right? With an Uber driver, the only... Excuse me, sir. Can you tell me how to get to so and so? Hold up a minute. I've got to have a look. I've got to put in me. Yeah, we go down this road, we go around it, and he's looking off a phone. Yeah, right. But the difference with the knowledge is called knowledge. Not only have they got the knowledge. Sorry, mate. Sorry, Joe. Continue. Sorry, I'm about, about, yeah, I'll just get the phone. Um, it's not only in the knowledge, yeah, they're doing, yeah, and they're not sitting down in front of a, you know, at university or whatever, in front of a, they're going out, they're driving every street. Yeah, they're smelling the streets. Yeah, they're knowing what you know homeless people are on that corner. They're knowing what pubs on that corner. They're knowing what uh, cathedrals on that corner. So they use experience. So if you say to someone, "Oh, I want to go around London," yeah, I want to give you a tour of London. What are you going to do? Get in an Uber, or are you going to get in a London taxi? A London taxi is going to tell you about London. An Uber driver it will drive you around London. So it's the same sort of thing. It's the same sort of thing. You need people within that camp, yeah, that have been there, seen it, and done it, yeah? 
and and and, and down from the from the trainer, the, the teacher, you know, to the cutsman. I mean, I didn't even know who the cutsman was. The cutsman was trying to rub Joshua's eye, and he pushed his hand out of his eye. If that was me, I'd have hit him over the head with the, with the iron, because at the end of the day, I'm there to do a job. So, was he that confident in his corner? I mean, it, it was it was for me. It was very. Um, I've never ever seen in my life for 35 years in boxing, before the final bell goes, 20 seconds before the final bell goes, the stall's up, ready to go in the ring. I've never seen that in my life. You know? Okay, it's very interesting as well. And you were just mentioning his team there. Who do you think Annie Joshua could add to his team to help him improve them? Do you know what? I've been asked this question a few times uh, this week, and um, I'd have to have a think about it, because um, I'm not one of them people who's going to shout a name out. I mean... I'd have to think what he needs to work on. Well, I'll put it this way. I think he needs he needs someone that's been there, yeah? Someone that's come back from the brink, yeah? Um, say, for instance, I was looking after Anthony Joshua, yeah? Right? I would bring people into that camp, the likes of old fighters, like the likes of Julius Francis, Michael Sprock. You might not remember these names, you know? But what I would do is I'd say, look, show him how to hold. Because they knew how to hold. They knew how to mess people about. I'll know what beats uh, Alexander Usyk. He's not a proper heavyweight, so I'll know what beats him. But, you know, learn him how to hold. Learn him how to lean on fighters. Josh uh, Fury will do that to Alexander Usyk all night. Alexander Usyk, after three rounds, will be blown out of his ass because Tyson Fury just lay all over it because he knows how to do it. You understand what I'm saying? And I think it's a schoolboy error that he's an Olympic gold medalist or oh, Bari was a novice anyway. He's a limited gold medalist. He doesn't even know how to hold. You know, his feet are terrible. God knows what's happening with his feet. He's, he's hand up here, like tight as tight as anything. There's no relaxing. There's no. There was no feints in that in, in that fight at all. You know, we're just trying to give you a little bit of a different breakdown as well. Because where I've done so many channels and put their breakdowns, I like to I like to mix it up a little bit. Do you know what I mean? It's very yeah, similar yeah. to what. It's very similar to what I've said, but you know, it you know, listen, he needs a change, he needs a total change. And to see if he is hungry anymore, to see if he is hungry anymore. He's sponsored by Lucas Aid, but I don't know what Lucas Aid he was drinking because that, by the end of it, he was gassed. Yeah, I always like I like Lucas Aid. I don't drink it much, so um just one thing yeah. I, I want to touch on. You made a point there you're saying you know what beats Alexander Usyk. What does beat Usyk then? I think what beats Usyk. Yeah, is is you've got to be relaxed, yeah, and you've got to apply pressure onto Alexander Usyk, right? But you ain't going to outbox Alexander Usyk. You've got to be rough. You've got to be dirty. You know, you've got to get inside. But you've got to get there with a jab first. Hold him. You've got to pull him about. You've got to maul him around. You know, you've got to pull it. Listen, he was it in Alexander Usyk, and Alexander Usyk was going. That's that's low. That's low. But he was falling for it, Joshua. I would have kept hitting him until the referee said, stop hitting him. You know, and listen, I'd have punched him in the kneecap. I'd have punched him in the ankle. And he's got to remember, he's got home advantage. So there's certain things that Anthony Joshua is going to get away with. And there's certain little tricks you can teach Anthony Joshua that he's going to get away with. You know, dirty little tricks that the referee ain't going to see. They're going to be on the blind side of the referee. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I don't think he should have come in as light as what he came in. I, I honestly don't. I don't think he should have come in as light as what he should have done. And do you know what? Why not? Why not? We know Alexander Usyk's a slow star. Go out there. You've got four rounds in your son. Stick it right all over him. Do you know what I mean? Because he did hurt him a few times. He did hurt him a few times. Yeah, I see you what know? you mean about uh, sticking it on him. That's what I think that's what most people are saying now. You just need to stick it on him. I guess if he comes in lighter, he's going to aim to box, which is what you don't really want to be doing, I guess, at the end of the day. Boxing for Alexander you Usyk. Ain't, you ain't going to outbox Alexander Usyk and... Joshua come out in the first round tactics, hands up here, you know. I mean, he was like a fencer. He was like, like you had you had uh, Usyk hands here, relaxed. Knew the shots were coming. Knew the shots were coming. Joshua never slipped. He never he never fainted. He never done nothing. Listen, when his hands are here, why didn't Joshua? When his hand was here, so say that his hands there, why did he push that down and then bang him over the top? Just just little things. I mean, what was he going back to the corner? God knows what he was telling him in the corner. I don't know whether they said, look, it's Harry Potter in the other corner. You've got no chance. He's got a, he's got a magic wand. You know, it, it, it don't make it don't make sense. Like, 
There's no, I don't think there was any direction in that corner. Maybe a, maybe they had the sat-nav in the corner like the uh, Uber drivers, you know. They, they just went by a sat-nav and, you know, th there's only one way of beating them and that's it. But for me, for me, you know, you need people in that corner that have got the knowledge, experience. And you know what? Listen, and you don't want this, mate. You don't grit your teeth, mate. I'm pulling you out. Liven him up. They were just, they were just happy for... I think they was just happy for him to get through them 12 rounds in the end. They was happy for him to get through them 12 rounds. Do you know what I mean? Listen, he hit Shea, he can hurt you, uh, Alexander Rusi. We've seen it. He hit him, he hurt him. Listen, let's go for broke. You're better off coming out there on a stretcher and trying to win. In the end, he, he, he didn't try and win. He just knew that Alexander Rusi was too good for him. And that's the danger. Because the Anthony Joshua we see before the uh, Ruiz fight, I'm not saying his feet were ever that great and things like that. I think there's loads of things you can pick up with uh, Anthony Joshua. But before the Ruiz fight, he had that little bit between his teeth in the Dillian White fight, in all them sort of fights, you know. And I felt, I feel like now nah, that's gone. That's gone. Whether it's the camp, whether people blowing smoke up his ass and saying he's great and he's lost the younger a little bit, I don't know. But we'll only, we'll only see in the rematch. But if he don't change, if he don't change that corner in the rematch, he gets knocked out. Yeah, certainly. I mean, it'd be interesting to see. One thing I always like to hear is when the camera zooms in and he get to hear what the corner are telling them. I don't think we got to see much of that, that this fight, which I found a bit annoying because I always find it quite interesting. Um, one other fight I want to get your thoughts on is coming up in November is Canelo Alvarez and Caleb Plant. I think the press conference. I was, I was talking to Louis Lin about it today, and I think the the fact that that little scuffle, the press conference, really will boost the fight. What do you think, though? Because I'm sure it'll get a lot more, a lot more views now. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Um, I ain't watched Caleb Plant yet. I'm not a mad boxing fan. I'll be honest with you. I'll just watch people as they go. We all know that uh, Canelo's a master. Um, you know he's great at what he does. Um, Caleb Plant looks up for it. Um, people say he's a good boxer and he can punch. So it will be interesting, but. Um, it's going to take someone to beat uh, Sol Canelo. I mean, I think the only thing that's going to beat him in the end is if he goes too heavy, fights the wrong person, or, um, or you know, he, get, he gets old overnight. He's had a lot of fights now. Um, but I, will, I would like to say as well, talking about Canelo, Callum Smith, for me, at light heavyweight, looks dangerous. Because people don't talk like... That man was a good opponent. That, he was a good opponent, that man, Castillo. Castillo had been the distance, mate, with 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 uh, Bivol, who, who was a world champion. Um, and he had a bit of experience, you know what I mean? And uh, Callum Smith absolutely showed his power at light heavyweight. And uh, I think he could be one to reckon with. I'd like to see Callum, again, move his feet a little bit more because he's got good feet, he's got good height. And I thought Buddy McGurk would have had him moving a little bit more on his feet. But we never see too much of... of uh, Callum, you know what I mean, Callum. So uh, I'll tell you what I would like to see. I'd love to see a super six. We've got a British bust up here. We've got Yard. We've got Boatsy. We've got... Um, Lyndon Arthur. Uh, Lyndon Arthur. We've got... Johnson. Callum Johnson. Yeah. We've got, uh, we got Smith. And maybe put a wild card in there. Maybe chuck a wild card in there. You know, that would be phenomenal. I mean, we could generate that in. We could generate that in. You could probably sell a stadium out with that. Yeah, you got Craig Richards as well. He went the distance with Bivol. Yeah, but uh, do you know what? I would have chuck a little bit of a, a little bit of a. You could go with him, but I, I, I put a little bit of a, you know, a knockout merchant in there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like, make Craig Richards, I rate Craig Richards, but would he be in that exciting fights in that? But I think all the rest of them are quite exciting. They've got a bit to them, you know what I mean? Lind Lyndon Arthur's probably a little bit. Craig Richards, -y, but Lyndon Arthur is still mixed it with the best, doesn't he? You know what I mean? You know, all right, you can say that uh, Craig Richards has, has done it with Bivol, but yeah, may maybe chuck a Bivol in there. Maybe chuck something like a Bivol in there. Exactly. The Super Six series, that's what the, the Salem brothers always did. That always, always gets a lot of views. And they haven't got, I don't think they've got one coming up. They've got like, Eddie Hearn, he's putting it, he's, we just said that Eddie Hearn's doing that at the women's. Um, well, he's doing a Chantel Cameron. He's doing a women's kind of Super Six series, a big little tournament, and the winner of it will be unified. So that's quite a good idea. I guess it's probably a bit easier doing it at the women's boxing rather than the men's there's boxing. Not, way. 
yeah, there's not as much much money involved, is there, in it? And there's not, uh, you know, there's not as much politics involved in it. But I mean, they're all they're not all at crossroads. But you've got Callum Smith; he's he's throwing the last dice. You've got you've got Callum Johnson; he's always injured, um, so he's not his career ain't gone the way it should go. And we've got, we've got Yard, which again, you know, how far is he going to go? Then we've got Lyndon Arthur; maybe can move on a little bit, but. I just think chuck them all in together because I think that I think that'd be amazing over six months. You know what I mean? Just like they've done with the uh, Froch. That's what made Froch his name. Froch made that Froch made his name off the. Although he didn't win it, he made his name off the Super Six, didn't he? Yeah, over in the you know? he fought Ward in the final. Right? I remember that. I, mean, I watched yeah. it. the videos out. The kind of behind the scenes of it, the epilogue in a way. That's out on the on the Showtime YouTube channel. I always like watching those. I'm um, just one more fight. I want to get your thoughts on before I leave. Or let you go. Um, there's Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. I probably should have spoken about this when we were talking about the AJ fight because we were linked up better. But what are your thoughts on that matchup? And what are your thoughts on uh, Wilder's link up with Malik Scott? I'm not going to give you my prediction because uh, the prediction won't go out till next week. But uh, um, Tyson I think Fury, it's more interesting. I, th- I think it's more interesting that the time off. So I think the time off benefits Wilder more than it does Fury. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's been learning, hasn't he? He's been learning, and it looks like he's whether he's learned anything, I don't know. But he has been learning. He has been in the gym constantly. He let's hope he ain't been in the gym overtraining because the first words we heard out of Anthony Joshua's mouth, "I'll be back in the gym on Monday training." I mean, he's the fittest person in the world. The geezer's in the gym twenty four seven, but it's about teaching. So I hope if Matt Scott's teaching him things, I mean, Alex Scott weren't the greatest of fighters. But the greatest of fighters don't always turn out to be the best of trainers. It's usually the, the lower-level fighters. And not only that, Malik Scott's got so much experience. He's been in the Tyson Fury camps. He, he's been all around, do you know what I mean? And a lot of it is how uh, Deontay Wilder's head comes into this fight, I think. I don't think this fight's going to be as easy as what it was second the second fight. Um, I think the first fight, he thought he was going to knock him out because he'd been out you know, on the lash for three years. Um, the second fight... Uh, Fury jumped out on top of him. And again, I picked up on something very, very uh, good last time. You know, if you, if you watch the first round, he hits him with the right hand over the top of some Fury. It's him right in the ear. It's the equilibrium. As soon as the equilibrium goes, you're finished. Your balance goes and everything goes. And that's how the, Dante Wilder was a wounded animal for four rounds, five rounds, but still very dangerous. So I'm more excited about Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder, Alexander Rusik uh, versus Anthony Joshua because one shot can change the fight. Has he got the... Can he detonate that shot? Can he set that shot up? Is, is, the, is the telling thing. I mean, um, could we see Deontay Wilder versus Alexander Usyk? If Deontay Wilder chins Fury Will Fury and, and Joshua just fight each other? Does that make that fight more exciting then? You know, it's exciting. I mean, I'm not letting too much go, but I mean, I will, I want to, I want to sit down and really think about it. I'm personal friends with Tyson Fury, but I will say it as it is. I will say it as it is and what I think. But I'll tell you what, I'm not going to sit on the fence with this, but if his head's right on the night, whether, whether I'm, my, next week I'll make my prediction, but if his head's right on the night, he's got no chance. Deontay Wilder. I don't see it the same way again, though. I see Fury doing more of a Klitschko uh, 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 demolishment, like like doing what he done with Klitschko. I think safety first. Listen, you know that the golden egg's been beaten. Isn't it? The golden egg's been beaten in Joshua. There's not so much pressure on Fury now. So if he stinks the gaff out but wins on points, he's still won. You know, so that could be what he does. You know, because I don't see him running out and trying to do what he done against Wilder last time. So I think Wilder will be ready this time. I think Wilder will be the one that will, that will attack this time. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be interesting. But if Wilder comes out and tries to use his jab, for me, he's he's glutton for punishment again. The only chance Wilder's got is if he jumps on him. I'd say, listen, you got three, four rounds here, mate. Jump on him and throw as what you can. You know? So it's interesting. It's interesting. It's good that within... Two weeks, we've got two great fights. But is the Fury fight going to happen? Yeah, I, I see. I remember 
Eddie Hearn, I think he did an interview with IFL. It was yesterday, I think, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it was yesterday. And he was saying that, imagine then Fury beats Wilder and then Dillian White, because he's a mandatory fight, and then Dillian White beats Fury and then Dillian White can fight AJ for all the belts. I guess that'd be an easier fight to make. But then that's good about heavy boxing. You never really know. I mean, Wilder's got that, the one-trick pony, but that's the best trick you can possibly have in boxing and then the knockout power. But that's the thing. You never especially, know what's going to happen, which is so good. Especially at heavyweight, especially at heavyweight. But do you do you realistically see Tyson Fury fighting um, Dillian White in December? I don't. No, I don't I see don't that. In December. I think it'll be... Well, he's got to fight as mandatory. If he wins, he's got to fight as mandatory. But I think it'll be early uh, 2022. Or do we see him slipping? Do we see him stepping aside and just fighting Joshua? Do I think they get he's going to want his belt. I think. I think if Joshua doesn't have his belts, he's going to want his belt, though, isn't he? Because then you have something on the line, be more marketable. Yeah, but I think I think I think Dillian White will still step aside if the money's right for, to make that super fight because people are still interested in that fight. And the thing is, they're not boxing fans; they're boxer fans. So they will sell an arena at, uh, sell the stadium at because it's Anthony Joshua. Because as big a name as Tyson Fury is, he don't sell like Anthony Joshua. You know, no one sells like Anthony Joshua. And people forget the loss against Ruiz. Like, he's lost again now. But I think it's irrelevant in, in one or two fights' time if he comes back. Do you know what I would do, though, if I had him? I wouldn't have him go straight back into that return. I wouldn't have him go straight back into that return. I'll get him a couple of warm-up fights. Do you know what I mean? I think his confidence has been, been knocked to pieces there. Do you know what I mean? I think he's been at, you know, he's had no one, no real people around that camp with him for a long time. Um, and that's from the outside looking in. I, you could see that it weren't right on the night. You know what I mean? And he was looking for reassurance off crowd, off people walking in, security guards, covering people in the crowd as he's walking to the ring. I mean, people saying, oh, that's how Joshua is. That's, and he answered, that's how Joshua is. Go back and watch Joshua's fights. I've never seen him do that, start cuddling people in the crowd on his way to the ring. Especially against a fighter like Alexander Rusev. Even when he won the British title off, um, what's the tall geezer's name? The Scottish geezer, I forgot his name. Oh, uh, it knocked him out. Yeah, I forgot yeah. his name as well. Gary, Gary something, I think his name is. Um, oh, I can't think his name. But uh, yeah, when he, when he won that, when he won that, the vacant title, totally focused, went in there, knocked him out. Gary, Gary Cornish. Gary yeah, Cornish. Gary Cornish, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he knocked him out, you know, and done it in style, you know. Um, I'd like to see how Joshua is this week with the fans because uh, the way he was with the fans on Saturday night, you know, he must be sleeping around a few of the fans' asses because if he, if he's that close to them, you know, I just I, I don't I don't understand it. I just don't understand. It. A big superstar like that needs to be looked after in the right way. You know, if you've got clans around you and you've got a circus around you, he's going to go and do what he wants, isn't he? I'm surprised he didn't jump up into the stand and start cheering and all that, you know, but... Uh, Obviously, uh, Tottenham have been getting a bit of stick as well because uh, obviously every, everyone that goes to Tottenham, uh, uh, sorry, everywhere Tottenham goes, they get battered. And uh, is he a Tottenham fan? Is he? Is he a Tottenham fan? No, I don't. I don't know what. I mean, I think Kuhn Cassius is an Arsenal fan. I don't know what Andy Joshua is though. I don't know. I wonder, I wonder what. I wonder what they. Um, I wonder why they didn't go to Wembley. Mate, I don't know. That's a good point. Maybe it's just someone new. Them to go. I'm not sure why not. That's a good point. Well, suppose it's that. Maybe they've been paid that to go there. Yeah, maybe. You know what so. I mean? But um, listen, it was great, mate, being on. And uh, thank you very much for your, well your time and that. Do you know what I mean? And it will catch up soon. Cheers, mate. I'll put your I'll put your channel link in the description. I will give you a subscribe to that. But we'll catch up in a few months then, PJ. Thanks so much for your time, mate. Yeah. Thanks. Tell everyone to subscribe to Voice from the Corner. That's the top and bottom of it. And listen, Fred, I'll, I'll stay in touch and uh, any advice you need, I'm always here, mate. Awesome. I appreciate that, Peter. Until next Cheers, time, mate. thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.